Naruto and Boruto are similar in many ways, but in a majority of ways, they couldn't be more different. Naruto was always neglected, and this caused him to crave attention and to be almost overly protective of the bonds he could make. On the other hand, Boruto was a brat, and he never needed to struggle for any attention. He was the son of the hero of the leaf, as well as Hokage. He never needed to struggle for the love he got, and as such, he became slightly spoiled. I won't deny the growth Boruto has displayed in the series, but he was a real work in progress. He's far more mature than Naruto, but early on didn't take being a shinobi seriously. He was prideful and had no care for teamwork, believing the only power required would be his own. And when his power was not enough, he wouldn't be above using something considered cheating to achieve his goals. While Boruto eventually grows out of this, the start is important because we're going to be making Boruto and Naruto trade places. Boruto will take Naruto's place in part 1 and 2 of the original Naruto series, while Naruto takes on Boruto's place in the Next Generation series. Let's see how it affects the series from this point on. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers in all of our accounts by the end of the year. Our story starts where you would expect. One October night, about 12 years prior to the main story of Naruto, a baby cries out after birth, left alone as its parents lay dead. On its stomach is the 8 trigram seal that is proof of the seal placed on it. That seal is meant to hold something in, something large, something hateful. Was it the baby's fault that its mother and father had perished in battle? Was it the baby's fault that the village was practically destroyed by a massive creature of mountainous proportions? No, this wasn't the baby's fault. All it did was come into the world. But the villagers of Konoha don't see it that way. They look at that baby and all they see are the faces of those they loved trampled over by the nine-tailed fox. As it grows from infant to toddler and from toddler to adolescent, their resentment grows to anger and from anger to hatred. This child is Boruto, and he is the Ninetales Jinchuriki. Now, as Boruto grows, he will experience all of the hatred Naruto once felt, but his reaction to it might be a bit different. He takes it with a strange maturity, but it really gets on his nerves. Unlike Naruto, Boruto finds himself crying quite a bit over it. He has no friends or family, and nobody loves him. Nobody even seems to care about him. If anything, the people seem to hate him and wish he weren't even alive. He also begins to hate the villagers and resent them as well. He would hear the whispers in his head from an unknown place. Wouldn't it be easier if they were gone? Wouldn't it be easier to destroy them? Boruto pushes these thoughts from his head. After all, he is Boruto. He's not a cold-blooded killer. Boruto believes he might be able to earn their respect if he were to become a shinobi, so he enrolls in the academy. He's quick to pick up shadow clones, but they aren't anything special. It's not like he can cast a thousand of them. Boruto might still get approached by Mizuki, and I don't know what he could offer him. Naruto needed shadow clones, and so he stole the scroll of seals to accomplish that, just as Mizuki wanted. Given that Boruto can already make a shadow clone, I doubt he would really need the scroll of seals. In fact, Boruto is one of those who graduates, so I don't see Mizuki approaching him. Due to this, Boruto would not learn about his being the Ninetales Jinchuriki until later. Boruto is placed on Team Kakashi alongside Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. Neither Boruto nor Sasuke get along very well. They're both heavily prideful. They might have a few, or a lot, of disagreements, but this doesn't sour the team completely. Boruto, unlike Naruto, also possesses no attraction towards Sakura. This leads to Team 7 functioning somewhat better, actually, save for the generally verbal squabbles that Boruto and Sasuke get into. Kakashi introduces himself, and no prank is pulled, which is a good sign. He asks his team what their names are, what they like, dislike, and what their goals and aspirations are. Sakura's wouldn't change, nor would Sasuke's, but Boruto, on the other hand, would say something different. He would likely start with a critical statement over Sakura and Sasuke's dreams, and would simply state that he wishes to be a shinobi in hopes of earning everyone's respect. Sasuke would likely say something sarcastic here in return for Boruto's statement, and Sakura would agree with it. Kakashi would suddenly realize that this isn't looking to be as easy as he thought. He worries that Team 7 won't mesh, and that they won't be able to learn teamwork. This would be where the bell test takes place. During this test, Boruto plays it smart, and Sasuke displays his prodigious nature, which almost get the bells twice. However, at the end of the day, no one on Team 7 displayed any teamwork, which leads to them failing. 
Normally, Kakashi would send them back to the academy and abandon the team, but he senses high potential here, so he gives them the answer. It's all about teamwork. If you want the bells, you'll have to work together for them. Boruto questions how they can when there are only two bells. Someone won't be able to graduate. Kakashi tells them that it's not up to them to determine that and to try again tomorrow. For the rest of the night, Team Not Yet 7 would discuss this and attempt to formulate a plan. By the next day, they get back to Kakashi and he asks who will be the sacrificial lamb so that the others may graduate. Boruto would inform them that the entire team came to the conclusion that there wouldn't be a sacrificial lamb and that they all either pass or would be sent back. Whatever the conclusion may be, Team 7 sticks together. Kakashi's pleased with this answer and decides to let them join his team. He would tell them that what they just decided on was exactly what he was looking for. Team unity and caring for each other. He automatically passes them. From here, they do odd jobs as usual until the Land of Waves arc. During the Land of Waves arc, Boruto would more than likely freeze, much like Naruto, but he would get his bearings fast and likely respond with a Shadow Clone. Probably wouldn't do much against them, but it would buy enough time for Kakashi and Sasuke to step in. They would deal with the Demon Brothers. While Sasuke would still chastise him for freezing, he would commend him for his instincts as a shinobi. Kakashi would agree. Continuing on, they would be stopped by Zabuza. Here I could see Boruto displaying more confidence. Over confidence to a point, nearly challenging Zabuza openly. Kakashi would have to reel him back in. Zabuza would make note of Boruto's guts, taking some interest but would focus more on the legendary copy ninja. Most of Zabuza and Kakashi's battle remains the same up until the water prison. Sasuke and Boruto would team up to attack, likely probing his defenses with kunai. Sasuke would probably release a great fireball jutsu which Boruto would use as cover to get around Zabuza to attack from behind, but his mistake is that he thinks Zabuza doesn't know he's there. Zabuza would grab Boruto and commend him for his guts, but he would tell him he was foolish. He would try to snap Boruto's neck, only for the shinobi to suddenly puff out of existence, showing that it was but a shadow clone. Boruto comes around with a kunai, attempting to stab Zabuza, only for Zabuza to be required to jump back to avoid it, letting the water prison go, which would allow Kakashi to escape. It would be now that Haku would appear to kill Zabuza with his senbon, which Kakashi would note is a particularly strange weapon for a hunter nin to use. Too precise, and does little damage unless it hits a particular list of spots. From that, he begins to suspect that Zabuza is not dead, but Kakashi feels like he himself is. Remember, Kakashi hasn't changed. He still used his Sharingan and overused his Chakra. This means he's going to be out for a little while, and during this time, he wishes to teach his students Chakra control. This is something Kakashi excels at. Kakashi Harake doesn't have a particularly deep well of Chakra, but he can still use high-level techniques because he can control his Chakra to a point that he only ever uses as much Chakra as is required, which allows him to fight longer than even those with deeper wells. Sakura would still be as proficient as before, and Sasuke would continue to have problems. I could see Boruto basically faceplanting into a tree. He'd have very little progress, sort of like Naruto did at first. He would seem like he wants to give up. He would complain about there being far better ways to climb trees that don't require chakra. Sakura would coach him a little and help him understand what he's doing. That being said, he actually masters it far faster than Naruto would. And due to Boruto's lack of infatuation for Sakura, Sakura might be more open to it as he doesn't threaten her own dreams. Much like before, Inari would exclaim that heroes don't exist. You would too if you were his age and witnessed the only heroic father figure in your life get slaughtered by a ninja mafioso in the most brutal of ways. But unlike Naruto, Boruto would not bite back. Boruto wouldn't look down on him or anything, but he would merely ignore Inari. He might whisper under his breath, not with that attitude. It wouldn't be that much longer until Inari's mother, Tsunami, would get him and take him back to his room. Boruto would scoff. What's his problem? It would be then that Tazuna would mention the history of Inari's father, Kaiza. And yes, I consider him his father. Family is more than just blood. He would recount how much Inari loved him and how truly heroic Kaiza always was. But then he would tell him how Gato had murdered him to make a symbol out of him. Boruto would lower his head. Sheesh, this Gato guy is the scum of the earth. Tazuna would continue telling them how it was Gato who didn't want the bridge created because that would mean it would be easier for the Land of Waves to trade, and that would make Gato's business start to sink in the water that the bridge crossed over. Boruto would nod in understanding and would say that he would make sure that this bridge got made. The next day, while they go to the bridge to help cover its creation, Inari and Tsunami are captured. We get the same battle against Haku and Zabuza as you would remember. However, when Sasuke is seemingly killed, Boruto loses control of himself, and that allows the Ninetales energy to pour out, giving him the same slitted eyes and deeper pigmentation on the cheeks, as well as claws and sharper teeth. 
However, instead of Boruto powering up, he almost seemingly sleeps. In the place of his consciousness is a being of deeper voice. Still trapped, but I'm able to move now. Interesting. Haku would almost seem a little confused at this odd shift. Suddenly, Boruto would jump up and smash through the ice mirrors with his chakra. Haku's sent flying. Before he can rise though, he's met with Boruto, who forms a tailed beast ball in his hand and raises it to face Haku. Boruto would display a nefarious grin on his face. All of you shinobi think you can control anything that comes your way. From a village you claim is your own, to a bridge you don't want created. You need to learn to accept that there are some things that can never be controlled. Some things refuse to be controlled. And with that, Boruto releases the tailed beast ball, completely eradicating Haku and a fair portion of the bridge. Sakura is terrified by this new strangeness in Boruto. Even Zabuza and Kakashi are startled by it, but that doesn't stop Boruto from attacking them both. Facing off against Zabuza, Boruto, under the complete control of Kurama, would speak. You possess a deep darkness in your heart. The world has poured all of its hatred into you to make you a monster of its own creation. Even still, your hatred pales in comparison to mine. Boruto Rama would appear to transform a bit more. He would take on a partial transformation that would give Boruto the ears of a fox and a fox's tail. His hair would stand on end in a more bestial manner and he would get dark lining around his eyes. Red fur would almost seem to form in his arms as his legs shifted shape a bit. Boruto makes short work of Zabuza and then would turn to target Kakashi. For the longest time, Kurama has the edge on Kakashi until Kakashi lifts his headband to reveal his Sharingan. He would cast a Genjutsu over Kurama to force him to sleep. Kurama would see it and groan, his last moments of consciousness allowing him to openly curse the dojutsu that had taken control of his body all those years ago. Boruto would fall to the ground and Kakashi would catch him. Boruto would wake up and ask what happened, and for the sake of Boruto and perhaps the entire land of waves, he wouldn't tell him right now. He would instead help him up only to discover that the bridge is now being rushed by Gato's men, and at their center is Gato himself with his hands on the necks of both Tsunami and Inari. He commands the builders to stop building the bridge and the leaf shinobi to retreat, elsewise he'll kill both Inari and Tsunami. Having no choice, they retreat with the builders. They take refuge in Tazuna's home with him. Kakashi confirms that the mission is a failure and tells them to ready to leave for the leaf in the morning, but Boruto would buck this. We can't leave the people like this, not with that bastard in control. Kakashi would say that they have no other choice. Boruto would grunt, but when Kakashi puts his foot down, Boruto goes to bed. That night, however, he sneaks out of the house and makes his way under cover of night to the bridge where he sees that Gato's men are already considering blowing up the bridge to halt its creation. Boruto had managed to use the techniques Kakashi had taught him to run across the surface of the water, stealthily making it past Gato's men. Upon reaching the other side, he would find a warehouse where Gato's men were based. He didn't know for certain if Inari and Tsunami were there, but he assumed that if they were anywhere, they must be in there. Acting on the hunch, he keeps low and sneaks up to the warehouse. He would throw a rock, causing it to pop off the side of the wall, drawing one of the guard's attention. Boruto would appear behind him and put him in a chokehold. Once the guard was out, he would sneak up the side of the warehouse and look in. Sitting in two chairs towards the center, quietly, was Inari with his mother. Boruto would sneak in and make his way over to them. He would tell them to keep quiet and would pull a kunai and cut the rope, but Gato expected this. Waraji and Zori would appear out of the shadows to attack Boruto, but Boruto would launch back and defend himself. He would duel with the two samurai, outclassed. He'd form a shadow clone, but Zori and Waraji were still able to deal with him. Boruto is beginning to think he might just die here, but to his surprise, a pair of kunai come down and strike Zori and Waraji, pinning them to one of the nearby crates, only to be kicked through by a set of feet. Kakashi stood there, having used shadow clone jutsu to attack them. Boruto would smile. Kakashi sensei. Kakashi would look over at his genin. We'll talk about this later. Kakashi would help free Inari and Tsunami, but the battle drew the attention of Gato and his men. Gato would stand there, gripping his cane. My, what I would do to have a pair of shinobi like you on my payroll. Kakashi would decline it, and the four of them would take off running. Surely you had a plan to get out of this, didn't you, Boruto? Boruto would laugh. Actually, I did. Gato and his men would come out and see four figures crossing the bridge. Stop them, he would shout. They would chase the figures across the bridge, only for it to be revealed that the four were shadow clones. On the roof of the warehouse stood Boruto and Kakashi, each carrying Inari and Tsunami on their backs, respectively. Boruto would smile. He would raise his fingers as suddenly the paper bombs he had attached to explosives on the bottom of the bridge would go off, taking the whole bridge down and Gato's men with it. Boruto would let off a nose flick in pride and look to Kakashi who would be rubbing his temples. You just completed Gato's job for him. Boruto would look back. Well, yeah, but now the villagers are free of him. They can rebuild the bridge and besides, Kaiza has been avenged. 
Inari's eyes would light up and he would catch a glimpse of Kaiza in Boruto, and at that moment the young boy would know that heroes do exist. Boruto would return to the Hidden Leaf the next day. It would take the villagers over a year to reconstruct the bridge after its absolute and total collapse thanks to Boruto, but also thanks to Boruto, Gato and his men were no longer a threat to them, meaning they could work quickly and without threat. Unable to repay the debt they owed him, they decided to name the bridge the Great Boruto Bridge, after the brave shinobi who taught the tiny village that heroes still existed in this world. Upon returning to the village, Kakashi brings Boruto to the Hokage's residence where they would explain to him what had happened, and about the Ninetales and its history. They would inform Boruto that he's currently the Jinchuriki of the Ninetales, and that he had lost control on the bridge against Zabuza and Haku. Boruto would ask what happened. The Hokage would say it's possibly an error in the seal, or possibly it has to do with Kurama and Boruto possessing some odd connection. But the best he can think to do is add another seal. Hiruzen asks Boruto to lay down, and he would then apply another seal. A form of the five element seal like Orochimaru used in the original timeline, but only this seal is perfected by the third Hokage. It causes sudden pain that takes Boruto's breath away, and then causes him to pass out. Hiruzen explains that this seal will further cut off the Ninetales chakra from Boruto, which should make it a bit more controllable, and makes it less likely for Boruto to lose control to Kurama. After this, Boruto would awaken in his apartment where he would make it out to join his team for their lower class missions. However, especially after what he witnessed from his team during the Land of Waves mission, he feels they're completely ready for the Chunin exams. Most everything happens the same way through the first exam. However, at the second exam, Boruto does not have access to the Ninetales power, meaning Sasuke gets hammered by Orochimaru's snake and he barely fights back. Orochimaru would still brand him and take his leave. The difference here is that Boruto is still awake as opposed to Naruto who would also be out right now. This means when Team Dosu comes to attack Sakura, Boruto is ready and Lee and the others might not need to help them. Now, I said they don't need to, this doesn't mean that they don't because Lee does have a thing for Sakura. Most of this happens the same as before, and they make it to the tower at the center of the Forest of Death. After this comes the exhibition matches. Boruto, already having witnessed the power of the other shinobi, begins to doubt his ability to beat them. He wishes to become a Chunin though, and believes that his actions in the Land of Waves is proof that he deserves it. He's offered a strange device that allows him to mimic high-level jutsu without any hand signs or training. He takes it and believes it will help him gain an advantage. Besides, the rules don't really say anything against this, do they? No, seriously, do they? I forget. I know it was against the rules in the tuning exams during Boruto, but I forget if it was specifically disallowed here. Either way though, he fights against Kiba and Akamaru and uses a few of these jutsu, but when seeing how dedicated Kiba and Akamaru is and after hearing how hard they work to get this far, Boruto is absolutely disgusted in himself. He would remove the device and cast it aside, resolving to beat Kiba and Akamaru in battle fairly. They would fight, and it would be fairly close, but Boruto does soundly win. Most of the other matches go just the same. Boruto would then get his month off. Kakashi would still train Sasuke, and in the end, Boruto would train under Jiraiya. Jiraiya would know that Boruto is Minato's son, and as such is the Ninetales Jinchuriki. He would ask why he has a rather refined 5 element seal over his 8 trigram seal. He mentions that the odd numbered seal on top of this even numbered seal creates an imbalance that doesn't allow him to make use of his tailed beast's power. Boruto would explain what had happened. Jiraiya would understand and note that if it was the Hokage's decision, then he must respect it. While he believes Boruto can learn to use Karama's power, it's apparent that he isn't quite ready for that, so he opts to help Boruto learn something else. Something far better. After the month off, they return to the Leaf and enter the stadium where the next matches are set to take place. Boruto is meditating when Hinata comes up to him and tells him that she believes in him. Boruto is a bit worried about his battle against Neji, but he resolves to try his best and is interested how his secret weapon will function against the Byakugan. The match would get ready to start. Boruto would just be standing there when Neji gets ready. The match would begin and Neji would rush forward. However, Boruto would open his eyes to display a set of orange toad-like pupils as orange pigmentation covers the sides of his eyes. Boruto is instantly quicker and stronger, able to outdo even Neji. Neji can see him, but he can't touch him. That being said, he can still somewhat parry Boruto's strikes. However, Boruto has a specific type of technique Jiraiya taught him which allows him to strike Neji, even if his fist never makes contact. This special ability is taught by the toads of Mount Myoboku and is brought to you exclusively by Pervy Sage. Hiruzen would stand in shock. Is that Sage Mode? Where did Boruto learn that? Ebisu would tell the Hokage about Jiraiya. Hiruzen would sit down and smile. He would further watch the battle. Boruto would continue to fight against Neji. 
However, his control over Sage Mode is very weak, and his Chakra Well also isn't as deep as it could be, meaning that his Sage Mode doesn't last very long. Boruto would flip back and sit there, attempting to gather more nature energy, realizing that this is the downfall of Sage Mode. He attempts to flee from Neji and gather even more, however, Neji seems to be understanding the downsides of Sage Mode as well, which means he isn't going to let Boruto gather it up. He chases Boruto, but eventually stops short of him by a ways. Boruto's confused. He'd ask, aren't you going to come any closer? Neji would smile. I don't need to. You're already within my range. Suddenly, an 8 trigram symbol would appear on the ground. Neji would smile. 8 trigram, 64 palms, 2 palms, 4 palms. Boruto would be struck by these attacks, completely astounded by the speed of it all. 8 palms, 16 palms, 32 palms, 64 palms. Boruto would be struck by them all. He would then be struck in the solar plexus by a final shot that puts him into the wall. Boruto falls off the wall and lays there, paralyzed, many of his vital tenketsu having been struck. It seemed Neji had a secret technique up his sleeve too. Boruto is taken to the infirmary where the medical nin would help him recover. It comes to Sasuke's turn to fight, but he isn't there. Normally, he would be disqualified, but given that everyone was looking forward to his battle with Gara, a special exception was made. He eventually arrives and proceeds to fight, but before their battle could reach completion, Kabuto puts everyone in the stadium to sleep. However, Sakura wakes up, and she finds that Konoha is being attacked by Orochimaru. Hokage Sarutobi is facing off against his former pupil, all while Sasuke is already after Gara. Sakura finds Boruto and begs him to help. Boruto accepts this and heads out. He would eventually catch up to Sasuke and see him facing off against a massive sand monster, only later known as Shukaku. Sasuke is defeated. Boruto would gather nature energy and attack Shukaku, but to no avail. He would notice that Gara is on its head, and Sasuke would exclaim that Gara is asleep. That's how Shukaku appeared. It took over when Gara fell asleep. Sakura attempts to heal Sasuke with some of what she's learned during the tuning exams. Boruto faces off against Shukaku, but finds that none of his strikes are doing much. This beast is made of sand, and the force doesn't translate well due to how loose it is. And what's worse, Boruto is still weak from his battle with Neji, meaning his sage mode gives out not too long after. He needs to recharge, but Shukaku won't give him the chance. Sasuke would recognize this, and after having been healed by Sakura, he and she would both tag in to fight against Shukaku while Boruto replenishes his chakra. They last a while, but are ultimately defeated. Boruto knows there's only one chance to end this, and it's to strike Gara and wake him up. To that effect, he summons three shadow clones. One clone grabs the other and throws it into the air, while the third grabs Boruto and does the same. The third clone throws Boruto at the airborne clone. Upon collision, Boruto would use this clone to push off, which would cause all three to puff away as Boruto launches himself forward to strike Gara, waking him up and causing Shukaku to be resealed. They hit the ground, both out of energy. Boruto looks to Gara. So, you have someone living in you too? Can I ask? Does everyone hate you too? Boruto would laugh. If nobody else cares for us, we gotta care for each other, right? He'd then pass out. Tamari and Konkuro would show up and grab their brother and flee. Boruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all spend some time in the hospital but eventually get out. That is when Boruto is informed of Lord Third's death. He attends the funeral and is then sent with Jiraiya to fetch Tsunade and replace him. Along the way, they're met with Itachi and Kisame. However, Sasuke arrives to get vengeance but instead gets spanked by Big Bro. Jiraiya manages to buy some time until they're forced to retreat when Mike Guy shows up. They further find Tsunade who refuses to become Hokage, claiming it's a dumb position. Honestly, Boruto agrees. The position is nothing more than a title given to people. Despite it being reputed as the strongest ninja, it's obvious that they aren't. If Hiruzen truly were the strongest shinobi, then Orochimaru wouldn't have been able to kill him. Despite that, he knows they need a Hokage. He asks her to reconsider because the leaf needs a leader nonetheless. She asks who he is, and Jiraiya responds with, My student. His name is Boruto Uzumaki. Tsunade would stand and say that she wasn't about to become Hokage. After this, Jiraiya continues to train Boruto. It's then that Shizune informs them of what has happened. Tsunade went to meet with Orochimaru, who needs her to heal his arms, but in actuality, she's going to kill him. Jiraiya and Boruto race to meet her. Most of this battle goes the same, as Kabuto would still cut Boruto's heart muscles and chakra pathways. However, Tsunade heals him. Boruto would then stand and look to Kabuto. I've been waiting for someone to try this on. He would form a Rasengan, but to his disdain, the Rasengan isn't much larger than a marble. Kabuto laughs. What the hell is that? You plan to beat me with that? Boruto would growl. He would throw it at Kabuto. Kabuto would flinch a bit, but then the orb seemingly evaporates, and he begins to laugh. 
Tsunade sighs, wondering why Jiraiya thought it was appropriate to teach someone of Boruto's level such a high-class technique. But suddenly, Kabuto is struck by the Rasengan. Boruto's confused, but he begins to understand this. It was his vanishing Rasengan. The rest of the battle after this goes the same. Tsunade would return to the Leaf with them and take the role of Hokage. Sasuke would be boiling on Itachi and Boruto both when he gets his butt handed to him by the Sound 4. They offer to take him to Orochimaru to grow stronger. He accepts and leaves the village. A team is put together to track them down. While the others face off against the Sound 4, Boruto reaches the Valley of the End where he asks Sasuke what he's doing. Will he really abandon the village for this? Sasuke says he will. Boruto says he'll drag him back to the Leaf if he has to. The two proceed to fight, Boruto with Sage Mode and Sasuke with his Cursed Seal of Heaven. Boruto immediately identifies this seal as using Sage Chakra. It's a twisted rip off of Sage Mode, you know, Boruto exclaims. Sasuke attacks him anyway. Boruto is proven to be still yet superior to Sasuke in terms of strength and speed. However, Sasuke proves to lack the fatal flaw of Boruto's Sage Mode. He doesn't need to stand still to regain his chakra. It automatically refuels itself in battle. Boruto loses his form and Sasuke bodies him. From here, Sasuke leaves for Orochimaru's hideout. Boruto, along with the rest of the Sasuke recovery team, are returned to the Leaf when Kakashi catches up to them. Some are admitted to the hospital. They tell Boruto that Sasuke left the village and Boruto sighs. From this point on, Boruto goes off to train with Jiraiya. Jiraiya states it may take three years to complete it, though they do manage to do so in two and a half. Boruto agrees and goes with Jiraiya. And that is where we'll stop it for now. I know we didn't go through Shippuden yet, but we gotta save some time for later. I've held you here long enough. So, what'd you think? Did you like my little what if? I hope to make a part two soon. Leave a comment down below to tell me what you think would have happened. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up, and if you really enjoyed the video, then click the subscribe button. And if you've already done that, or are about to, consider clicking the bell to be notified when we make more videos like this. If you've already done all of this already, then you are a true Chad. Peace out, y'all.